Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be walking you through the absolute best settings to use in Fortnite Chapter 4 Season 3. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, not much has changed with the actual setting options. Epic does not like to touch those, but in terms of how the game looks and feels, it is very obvious that a lot is different. FPS and overall performance is down, the visual fidelity around all the new POIs is complete crap. I think the best way to sum it all up is this clip from XQC. I mean, it's so laggy, like, maybe if a 49 you can't play the game properly, maybe it's time to fix your game instead of adding a bullet Marvel jump shot bullshit. Seriously though, the game is not running at its best this new season, but luckily for you guys, I am here to help with that. I'm going to run you through all the different in-game Fortnite options, I'm going to show you how to optimize the new launcher settings as well as your NVIDIA control panel, and I'm also going to fix some problems you might have that only started in the new season. You know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Therefore guys, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe if you enjoy. Also use code Jerrion on the new season battle pass, it will help me out a ton. But without further ado, let's get into the season three settings guide. Alright, so I'm gonna have timestamps down below integrated into the video in case, you know, you wanna skip straight to the actual important main settings. But before we actually do that, I wanna cover all the new ones first. There's two or three new ones that really, really are important. And the first one you guys actually might remember if you watched the first video I made this season. I spent like a minute trying to figure out how to actually bind when you ride a dinosaur. There were two key settings that just for some reason were not bound. Yep, get me on that dinosaur. And what those two settings are, if you look at the bottom left, you can see them. Hold or dismount is unbound, as well as sprint. I don't really know why Epic decided to just not bind them for you. Like, they could just copy them from cars or, I don't know, from any other setting. But they left pretty much the two most important binds for actually riding a dinosaur. The only form of mobility we have in Chapter 4 Season 3, they left them unbound. And, uh, that's not good. So what you're gonna have to do is obviously go into your settings, go to the keybinds page, under keyboard control and scroll all the way down until you see it should be under the miscellaneous section so not in miscellaneous but it's the section under it you're gonna see boom riding the only two options here are literally dismount and sprint which are the only two we care about so for each of them bind it to something that you have open or that you know maybe you use for other vehicles I'm gonna put I guess X for my dismount and then sprint sprint I'm gonna keep the same as my normal in-game sprint which is F I'm then gonna apply that, and look, now when I'm in-game, my dismount option and my sprint option, they have an actual keybind next to them, so if I press F, look at that! We can finally sprint with the dinosaurs. This is the new and pretty much the only rotation we have, but it's the new best one. And then if I go and I hold X, look, oh. Oh, I kind of forgot. That is my augment keybind. Uh, we might have to go and rebind that. No, but those are the settings. That is how you can get the two most important keybinds in Chapter 4 Season 3, at least new ones. But again, as I said, guys, we're going to go in order of the newest stuff. So the next thing you're going to look at is actually not even in Fortnite. It's a Fortnite installer option. And then we're finally going to get into these settings. But if you want to skip ahead, go look at the timestamps. I just, I recommend watching the whole thing. You just don't know what you're going to miss, you know? I got some good tips. Wait. For this setting, since it is an installer option, you're gonna have to go to your Epic Games Launcher, boot that bad boy up, and then what you're gonna do is go to your library. Your library may look like this, but, you know, you can just change them by clicking these two buttons. Go to the three dots next to Fortnite, click on Options, and then, boom, Fortnite Installation Options. These are the ones that I have shown before, but if you look, take a gander right here, ladies and gentlemen. Epic added a new setting. Oh my god. It was actually added a few weeks ago. Regardless list, your installation options may look a little bit different. You may have Fortnite Save the World checked, you might have high resolution textures checked. That's fine, but I'm gonna tell you what to check and what to uncheck. I'm also gonna close this. We don't- I only speak English. Starting with Fortnite Save the World and high resolution textures, I recommend turning these off unless, of course, you use Fortnite Save the World. All high resolution textures does is it takes up 9 gigabytes of space, which, that's a lot of space. Not to mention that high resolution textures, it doesn't even make your game look that 
that much nicer. And it tanks your FPS. So uninstall both of those things. Those are the old ones that I've told you many, many times to uninstall. But now for the new ones. DirectX 12 shaders. I said this in my last sort of FPS boost guide like a month ago. What DirectX 12 shaders do is they basically scan out the entire map in your game. You can only use them though if you use DirectX 12, which I don't think a lot of you do. So if you're on performance mode, which yes, I do recommend, turn this off. Even if you're on DirectX 11, also uncheck this. What's going to happen is the download size will say zero because you're not downloading anything. You're uninstalling it, but you're going to have to hit apply and boom, it's going to uninstall it very, very quickly. Wow. We're going to go back in though. And why we're going back in is because we're actually going to check a setting for once. You know, we're not leaving these all unchecked. We're going to check disable cosmetic streaming. So what this setting does, which is actually kind of interesting, I'll read off what a PC optimizer says, is it basically makes you download every skin and texture while playing the game. Like you're literally streaming the actual cosmetics. Cosmetic streaming. What? Obviously, this is not a good thing because you never want to be streaming or downloading anything as you play. Fortnite is doing that. And Epic literally said themselves, players may notice a network bandwidth increase when streaming in high resolution textures, meaning it's going to take up a sizable bit of your internet speeds. The only sort of benefit is that if you have it off or you have it not checked, the cosmetics or in-game skins are going to look a little better. That kind of makes sense. But you're literally going to get worse FPS if you don't have it disabled. You need this checked, boys. So this time guys when you have this setting checked you're gonna have a download size of six gigabytes press apply and i'm not sure how long that'll take i say maybe 45 seconds <laughs> Was that even a minute? I think that was like, yeah, 30, 45 seconds. But again, boys and girls, those are your Fortnite installation options. This is what they should look like if you use performance mode and you want to have the best, most optimal ones. The only one you should ever change is if you use DirectX 12, download the shaders. The shaders are very important. So if you prefer DX12, check this and use that. But otherwise, this is what they should look like. Now you could boot up Fortnite and we can get into the actual in-game options. Let's go. Time for the settings that most of you came here for, the actual in-game video and display options. I'm going to cover all of these, including the DX12 ones, which you actually can't see on performance mode, but I say it every different settings video. They affect your FPS while you're on performance mode, so we have to change them. But beginning at the top with your display settings, window mode, have this on full screen. Full screen, it even says in the settings, it's going to make your game run faster and better. Please, boys, use full screen, not windowed full screen. Use full screen. Then resolution, which yes, I did hide my face for. Have this a 1920 by 1080. You could obviously use a stretch resolution, which I love stretch resolutions. But 1920 by 1080 is the safest and the best for content. Next up, VSync have off. The only VSync you should ever use is in your NVIDIA control panel. Do not ever use in-game VSync. Then for frame rate limit, have this one above your monitor's refresh rate. So I'm on a 240 hertz. I use 240 and that kind of destroys the whole tip that I just said. But if you're, say, on a 165 hertz monitor, use 180. If you're on a 144 hertz monitor, use 160 FPS. 75 hertz, use 120 FPS. It's just that simple. Then rendering mode, which, oh my gosh, I gotta put my face cam back for this. I just realized this, but read what it says. They straight up uninstall DirectX 12 from your game unless you go and you install the shader options, which I told you guys to uninstall. <laughs> Fortnite's getting a little crazy. So the only two options you have <laughs> are DX11 and performance mode, which is fine. We'll just go to DX11 to actually change the other settings. It doesn't make a difference. But that's hilarious. They straight up take DX12 away if you uninstall the shader option. How dare you? Either way, I always recommend performance mode or lower graphical fidelity. It's going to get you by far the best FPS, and I think it looks better than DX11 or DX12. After those settings, we're going to skip the graphic ones because I want to be in game to show it, like in an actual game, not in this random creative world, which, wait, why is my FPS? Yeah, bring that back up. Ah, much better. So we're going to go down straight to graphics quality or your performance mode options. These are very, very simple, boys. 3D res put on 100%. You could also put this lower because it really does not look that bad. This is 56% and it will definitely improve your FPS. But obviously, if you want your game to look the best and you want it to look like other people's, 100% 3D res. View distance put on near. Textures put on low. Meshes also put on low because I think they look the best now. Like pretty much every pro player and honestly, 
honestly, even most casuals, they use low meshes nowadays. I remember making settings videos like a year or two years ago, and I recommended everyone to use this. This was back when like only Reet, like no one else really used low meshes. But now, boys, it's the meta. It gets you by far the... Oh. I can't edit. Oh my. It gets you the best frames and it looks pretty damn good in my opinion. It's sort of like we're all used to it by now. But if you do want to use high meshes, you will have to back out of your game. You still can't do it while in game. You'll have to put your meshes to high and you'll also, which is kind of random still, you'll have to put your view distance to above near to at least medium. And now when you're in game, look, you have high meshes. Oh my. I have not used these. <laughs> I have not used these in so long. Ooh. I think I was better on high meshes. What do you guys think? Way back in the day when I wasn't washed? Oh, maybe not. Bruh, this actually looks so weird now. So yeah, those are the performance mode options. You can go back to near view distance on high meshes if you want low meshes. Don't ask me why or how that works, but it's a cool little tip. What we're gonna do now though is under your rendering mode, which my face blocks, but rendering mode option, go from performance mode and switch to DX11, not DX12 because this thing. We don't have DX12 anymore. So go to DX11, press apply. It's gonna make you restart, restart now, and bang. Uh, okay. It's restarting, and when we get back in, I'm gonna show you all the other settings you have, so that once you go back to performance mode, because performance mode is the best rendering mode, and it's the one that we all should use, we're gonna have the most optimized settings. We just have to actually optimize them in DX11. Oh, and yeah, there we go. Time for the DX11 settings, boys. You can see them all here. There's just, there's so many of them that you just don't even have the option for. Odd performance mode. I still don't know why Epic just doesn't show them. But starting with motion blur, obviously motion blur have this thing off. Motion blur is awful. Quality preset, you actually won't have the option. Look at that. Custom just disappeared. <sighs> Epic, epic, epic. You won't have the option for custom, but just go and put the quality preset on low. Okay, why did it just skip up there? 3D res, it's gonna put down to 50%. Put that at 100. That will give you the custom little quality preset that again, you can't select. So just do what I just did. These three settings you actually can't touch because they're grayed out, so leave them. Shadows though, have off. Global illumination, have off. Reflections, off. View distance, near, like I said. Textures low, effects low and post-processing low. You basically want to have everything off. That's how you get good FPS. And actually, which maybe some of you guys want to know, if any of these are grayed out, it means it's off. So like, you don't need to touch them or even worry about them. You can even read it. Temporal super resolution is disabled in the anti-aliasing and super resolution setting. So that literally means if you have anti-aliasing off, it's just going to be grayed out or off. But, you know, if you change it to one of these, look, it comes back on. So don't do that. On to the advanced graphics. Show FPS have on. Use GPU crash debugging off. Latency markers also have off. Those don't work anymore. And finally, NVIDIA reflex low latency. Put that to on plus boost. All of these settings. Wait, what the? What happened to these? <laughs> <laughs> that must have been the advanced. Oh no, I changed the quality preset, bruh. Everyone close your eyes. Okay, these are what your settings should look like. Jesus Lord. <laughs> Copy these exactly. These are gonna get you the best FPS and the lowest amount of input delay. I would explain each of these, but half of the comments on my settings videos are people telling me to shut up. I'm not even kidding about that. But I mean, you can even just read what Epic says about the setting. Like, use GPU crash debugging. Epic literally says enabling this feature comes at a small performance cost. Like, come on. Do you need me to tell you that? Just read on the right, man. Regardless though, boys, what we're gonna do from here just to finish off the actual graphic settings, which I haven't covered yet, and also, you need to do this, is change back to performance mode, go back from DX11 to performance mode. Performance mode, as I've said, it's the best rendering mode and the best setting option. We just had to come to DX11 to actually turn all of these off because they're not available in performance mode. Therefore, hit apply. It's gonna make you restart again, so click that. And now we could go to performance mode. These are gonna be the second to last settings we have, so I'll see you once my game loads.
Ladies and gentlemen, you should be able to guess what settings we're about to look at. They're the only settings we haven't done yet. The, sorry, had to hide my face there. The graphic settings, which are mainly your brightness and your colorblind mode because user interface contrast is only for your settings. It doesn't actually affect how your in-game looks. But beginning with your brightness, I recommend leaving brightness at 100% this season. All the new areas have a lot of fog, which brightness usually is not good with fog, but I've tried stuff like 80% and let me just show you. It doesn't look that bad in these areas, right? Like, my game looks fine. But if you were to say go to a different part of the map, like, you know, where is it? Yeah. This whole side that's orange. That's where you want your brightness to be high, as well as in the other green area around Mega City, the sort of, like, bluish green. So me, myself, I stick with the default 100% brightness. Colorblind modes, though. I mean, you guys know I also use default for colorblind modes. But this season, and pretty much only this season, I've actually actually been thinking about going to Tritonope, Tritonope 5 to be specific, because look at this. It makes the new areas look so nice. Oh my gosh. All like the greens are a little darker. All the blues are more blue, but like a lighter blue, which I think makes it stand out more because look at the water here. Like bruh, what in the hell are they doing to the water at Shady Stilts? But yeah, Tritonope 5 is sort of the only one I would recommend. You could actually see what the colorblind mode strength does, by the way, if you look at these colors colors. So look, Tritonope 1. Look at the green and look at the blue. I'm going to increase the strength of it and you can see the green gets darker, the blue gets more blue, the purple also gets sort of more pink. What I was going to say though is the two I would avoid, mainly the one, is Deuteranope. Dear God, boys and girls, do not use Deuteranope this season. Just ugh, look at the new part of the map. Ugh, uh, it just, it looks so like, I don't even know, just bad and gross. Do not use Deuteranope or even Protonope because it just, it's too dark around the new areas and that coupled with the fact that there's fog, it's not a good combination. So for that reason, colorblind mode strength or colorblind mode, put that to either Tritonope or off. Strength is obviously zero if you're on off, but five if you're on Tritonope and boom, your game will look a lot nicer. But yeah, those are all the in-game settings. We still do have one more setting, sort of quick little setting options I'm going to go through, but they're not in-game. So I'm going to, you know, I'm quitting. Uh, hello? The final settings I'm going to show, boys and girls, are yes, your NVIDIA control panel. Just right-click on your desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel, and what you're going to do is on the left where it says 3D settings, go to adjust image settings with preview from here, which this is important because a lot of people don't do this. Click the middle option, which says use the advanced 3D image settings. So boom, click that. Also apply it. And then hit take me there. What take me there is going to do is it brings you to manage 3D settings, and that's going to give you all of these settings, which basically just copy guys. I'm not going to run through all of them, but I'm scrolling through. You want everything off. Oh wait, not everything. Low latency mode, have this to on. That's important. Anything that's on sort of prefer maximum performance, like look, power management mode, you want on prefer maximum performance. Texture filtering quality, high performance. I guess the only sort of one which preferred refresh rate, most people should have on highest available, but I have a 360 hertz monitor and I use 240 hertz because because it screws my videos up. So that's the only one that might be a little different. Use the highest available if you want the best, the smoothest looking game. But other than that, texture filtering, this optimization, we're gonna have on. And then, yeah, I think that's basically it. I've seen some people, where is it? Some people have threaded optimization on auto. So maybe try that. I have mine on on usually. But in total, boys, those are the best NVIDIA settings. Let me know if you want an in-depth video where I literally run through all of them. Like, like in depth, but you guys always tell me to be quiet and just to show the settings. So here they are. I won't say much more. All I'm gonna say is like the video if this helped, subscribe, use code Jerry to support me, and don't forget to apply the settings because then you won't have the right ones. Look how helpful I am. Drop a damn like!